Eric, well, it could be history in the making as President Trump agrees to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The stunning development marks a potential turning point after decades of hostility between the U.S. and the Hermit Kingdom. But the devil is in the details as the U.S. faces many hurdles ahead of this historic meeting. Asia analyst Gordon Chang joins me now. He's also the author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. Gordon, so ha glad to have you here. Um, and I want to talk about those hurdles in a minute, but I first I want to ask you, what do you make of uh, Press Secretary San Sarah Sanders' comments that there's not going to be a meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un until we see concrete actions? That also, what is the White House's position today? Is it a smart and strategic position, and is it a, a position of strength? Yeah. Sarah Sanders said that yesterday, but the White House walked that back privately in comments to the New York Times and to other publications. And the reason is that she's added a new qualification to a decade-old U.S. policy. Our policy has always been we will talk with the North Koreans if beforehand they acknowledge their prior um, uh, obligation to give up their nukes. That's all we asked. We didn't ask for concrete actions, which is what Sarah Sanders said we were now requiring. And I think it's actually a good idea that we talk to the North Koreans just with a pledge, even with no concrete actions, because we hold a lot of high cards in this uh, negotiation. Also, South Korea, our main ally, wants us to talk to North Korea. We need to keep our alliance with South Korea strong, and that includes talking to the North Koreans. So much in there. Uh, why do you say we, ha we hold high cards? Like what? The sanctions. Um, the reason why the North Koreans are willing to talk to us is because they're really being hurt by U.S. and U.N. sanctions. There are so many reports, for instance, that Office Number 39, which is the Kim family personal slush fund, is running out of cash. Uh, the South Koreans are saying that North Korea is going to run out of its foreign exchange reserves by October. There's also a lot of other anecdotal evidence in that direction. And that means Kim needs a lot of sanctions relief. So he's got to come to us because we're the ones maintaining those sanctions. Okay, so you're saying that sanctions are what's drawing or forcing Kim Jong-un to the table. You believe the meeting will ultimately take place? If it does, where will it happen? And what do the optics alone say? Well, uh, the meeting probably will be in the joint security area in the demilitarized zone separating the two Koreas. Could be on the South Korean side of that. That's where Kim is actually going to meet President Moon Jae-in of South Korea in April. So it would be easy to hold the follow-up meeting with President Trump because the meeting with President Trump is going to probably follow the one with Moon. There's one bad thing about meeting this, and people point this out all the time, and that is Trump just merely meeting Kim is sort of elevating him, giving him legitimacy. But that's a very small price to pay because Kim has made a lot of pledges, according to the South Koreans, pledges that are important to us, including committing to giving up his nukes. That's really important. Important. Do those pledges come with a guarantee? Um, no, there's no guarantees, and the North Koreans are obviously lying. Uh, but nonetheless, um, we're not going to have an agreement where they say that they'll do something. We're going to have an agreement that says they do something and we enforce it with inspections. And inspections are really the only way that we can trust them because you can't trust them. Right, and you believe that we can actually get in there and, and, and find the, the necessary yeah. you know, uh, agents, if yeah. you will, in, in terms of their nukes. Can we get in there and find them, though? Well, if we don't have an inspections regime, there's not going to be an agreement. Agreement. And what means if there's no agreement is we're just going to continue the sanctions to the point where the regime is going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And you know, at some point. And you don't think China is going to keep, uh, or Russia, backdooring some monies to uh, Kim Jong un? They will do their best, but you know, the Trump administration has signaled to the Chinese that it's willing to impose costs on them. Um, and I hope that the administration will go forward with that because we know that the Chinese and the Russians have been sanctions busting recently. Yeah. And, and uh, Gordon, you say that you believe that Seoul and, uh, and Washington should maintain a relationship. But now you have uh, South Korean President Moon Jae-in Moon Jae in office, and he is a less of a, he's a little bit of a shady character oh, yeah. because his idea would be perhaps something else. Yeah. Well, Moon is a Korean nationalist, which means that he is feeling much closer to Kim Jong-un than he does to President Trump. And he also likes China a lot better than he likes us. The fortunate thing about all of this is that the South Korean people are on our side because they realize that the U.S. is the only guarantor of their safety and prosperity. So, you know, Moon is boxed in, and Trump has done a pretty good job of preventing Moon to do what he would otherwise want to do. So this is ultimately a good story for the U.S. As long as we keep South Korea on side, we're much more powerful than the two countries on the other side 
side of this divide, and that's North Korea and China. So all we have to do is maintain the relationship with South Korea. We'll be okay. So in terms of a chess move, you think President uh Trump made the right play. Are there pitfalls, pitfalls for the president? Oh, there, there are tons of pitfalls, but it was the right play for a number of reasons. As I mentioned, look, you know, if this all goes south, which it could very well do because the North Koreans are going to lie through their teeth, the point is we've got those sanctions, we've got the support of South Korea, and, and we can manage this. We've managed this for seven decades. I mean, sometimes it hasn't looked pretty, but we've always been able to maintain the peace. Yeah, but as President Trump says, you've man managed it, but it's not been managed very well, it, it, right. according to him. Uh, just a kind of a yes or no. So do you feel that uh, if Kim Jong-un is squeezed out of his money, that he would have no choice but to dismantle or discontinue building nukes? Yes. Gordon, he, he will have no choice. Gordon Chang, thank you so much. Nice to talk to you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Arthel.